Trek before you came into film criticism? Well, it's interesting because um, I think a lot of my uh, development in film criticism had to do with number one. I was a film minor way back when, when I went to college. And um, I just didn't, at that point, didn't see any kind of future in it, even though I had a passion for it. I always thought, well, it's supposed to be a hobby or whatever, but it never left me. So when I, I went into a media field, I went into advertising, but the love of film never left me. And every year from 1985, believe it or not, I would sit down at the end of the year and I'd see about 40 films on my own and I would write a top 10 list and I would tell, you know, just pass it out to people at the end. And, it, you know, it, it, the bug just never left me. And, and when, when we transitioned into the internet age and you were, had the ability to... Uh, actually blog about film I just said okay I'll just write about every film I see so I did that from 2000 to the point I was hired to be a critic in 2007 now at that point I thought that I had gotten I put in enough time in to you know be a professional critic but that was just the beginning and I feel like now I've gotten the 10,000 hours of professional criticism that I know my voice solidly and I can uh, write a, a review quickly or I can opine about a film without having to think about it, essentially. You know, it's just a natural kind of reflex thing. Perfect. So yeah. what do you think was the number one thing you wish you would have known when you started out? Well, it's interesting because the, the industry changed rapidly, obviously, with, uh, with the Internet coming in. Uh, w one of the things that uh, fascinate me about that is that writing has sort of been devalued. And um, obviously with newspapers having less and less influence, that route of general coverage, meaning that you're uh, reviewing films, you're also covering the scene, that sort of thing. Th that's a niche I, I liked and preferred. That niche is the one that's going away fastest. Because, you know, newspapers are not doing that anymore. Broadcast outlets cover it, but only on the surface and more celebrity oriented rather than just pure film criticism. So um, that's why I, I, you know, if I had to do it again, it'd be like a niche thing and, and really go for the expertise area. If you could choose your niche, what would you choose? That's a, boy, that's another interesting question. <laughs> um, I found lately that I, I like discovering new filmmakers. One of the things that has been a real bonus for me is, as far as uh, doing this for the last uh, eight years is that um, I met tremendously creative people. And uh, it's always interesting to hear anything from a creative person. Their point of view is, is based on their accumulation of knowledge and experience and the way that they uh, project it into the universe via the art of film. I found the Chicago International Film Festival to be a valuable resource for me, and it's been just uh, an amazing journey with them. Uh, I got to sit on my first jury with them last year, uh, Animation Shorts Jury, and that was just an incredible experience. Number one, seeing all the films that were available in that category, and number two, sitting down with experts and just parsing it almost to the frame where we finally uh, came to a consensus on who would win the award and then going to awards night and actually hearing it being called as the best animated short it was quite a thrill well thank you so much for yes. being with me pat that was chicago film news definitely follow us on twitter and facebook chicago film news and subscribe to our youtube channel my name is troy and until next time all the news that fits on a chip yes <laughs> like a <laughs>